Hey guys, Smelling Roses here. Today I'm on Hall Mountain in the Fairy Stone Farms Wildlife Management Area. I'm in Patrick County in the foothills of Southern Virginia, just east of the Blue Ridge Mountains. What I'm going to talk about today in this video is the Trailblazer Saw Viver. It's a folding backpacking saw. Now I've had a few issues with my saw and uh, that's what this video is about. If you do not own a saw viver, this video may not be of any interest to you and I apologize for that. Uh, however, a lot of guys own these and have had similar problems. Uh, fellow YouTuber PA Bushcraft uh, and I had some discussions about the problems we had with our saws and he actually suggested that I do this video. So here we go. Uh, maybe, maybe this will help some guys that have had problems. What I'm going to specifically talk about uh, on mine is the, uh, the screw where you make the adjustment for tightening and loosening the blade. Uh, that's a major weak point of this saw. I had mine break and as many of you know this saw viver is now a discontinued item and you can no longer get parts for it. I had actually planned on doing a full review of this saw. I really like it a lot. It's very lightweight, very useful saw when you're in the backcountry. Um, however, when I came to know that they were discontinued, I felt that uh, there was no longer a need to do a review on it. Okay guys, so a major weak point of the saw viver is this plastic tip that comes on your screw bolt where you make the uh, adjustment for the blade tension. As you know, from using your saw, uh, the blade needs to be really tight to, uh, to be efficient and effective with the saw. And on mine, apparently the issue was, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but I had some damage to the threads of the screw, which made it a bit difficult to turn, and uh, this plastic piece just snapped right off. And I'm sure this is a common problem, so I had to come up with a solution to repair my saw. Okay guys, so I just made a quick uh, visit to my local home improvement store. And I was able to locate these 1032 by 2 inch thumb screws. These are a little bit longer than the original screw that comes with the saw viver. But unfortunately this was the closest thing they had uh, to the length we needed without going too short. I got uh, both of these in a pack for 22 cents guys so you just can't beat that. Awesome. The advantage to a screw like this is that it's all one piece of metal. Uh, I would have liked to have seen the uh, surface here where we're going to adjust it a little bit larger for uh, better leverage, but this is okay. And as I mentioned, it is a single piece. Uh, this can break, but it's much less likely to break than the plastic crap that uh, comes, with your, comes with your saw originally. So let's get this thing put together and see what it looks like. One thing I noticed, guys, when I disassembled this part is that you've got a piece of milled aluminum here and a steel screw. So you've got a little bit of incompatibility of materials and uh, the threads in there can get gummed up. That's pretty typical with aluminum. Um, the threads can get gummed up in there, so I don't know if it's going to do any good or not, but I put a little CLP break free in there. Uh, this is really excellent stuff. Uh, I really like it on firearms, uh, carbon steel knives, appliances, anything where there's metal on metal. Uh, I really like it. I don't know if it's going to do any good on this aluminum, but uh, I'm just going to put some in there and I've got it rubbed on the threads of my screw just to uh, see if that helps out any. Okay guys, there you go. I have it assembled. can see we have some excess uh, bolt hanging out there that we can uh, cut off with a pipe saw, no big deal. But you can see that the part does move as we turn it to make adjustment. Back and forth, loosen and tighten. So apparently this does work pretty good. Let's go ahead and throw a blade on there and uh, see how it does with proper tension. Okay, so I've attached the, uh, the blade. Let's go ahead and tighten it up. And as I mentioned before, uh, you guys that use this saw, 
you know the blade needs to be pretty tight. If the blade is too loose, it just it just won't cut good. That's really tight. This is tighter than I've gotten it before. Very easy to turn with this new screw. I really like it. Okay, guys, one thing you'll notice is when you fold the saw up, this uh, new thumb screw that I have has a much higher profile than the original plastic one. So this arm is not going to fold back quite as far as the other one. But uh, this sheath that came with mine, you can see that it will still fit inside. Uh, I've got this excess bolt here that I need to cut off. But if I cut that off, this will still uh, slide down into my sheath. It's not really a big deal regardless. Uh, I just use this sheath when, when I'm storing the saw. Uh, if I was going to actually carry this, uh, like on a backpacking trip or, or whatnot, I would uh, probably just leave the sheath at home and just put the saw in my pack just like this. So not a big deal, uh, even if I left this um, screw extended on here. But certainly that's, uh, take a pipe saw and carefully cut that off. Just be careful not to damage your threads in case you need to get this uh, disassembled again. Okay guys, so here's the uh, assembled saw. Very happy to have it back up and running again, and uh, at 22 cents for the repair, very happy about that as well. Let's talk about a few other weak points of the uh, saw viver. Uh, one that points out to me are these rivets and this plate here that uh, kind of binds the top and the arms together. You have them on both sides. These rivets are a little bit weak, and if you are really going at it with this saw or uh, you know, rocks fell on it or whatever the case may be, you step on it. These rivets could break and this plate could also bend. Um, again, this would be a fairly easy and uh, inexpensive repair if you needed to do that. Not likely it's something you could repair in the field, but um, certainly a very easy fix uh, if, if that became a problem. Another major weak point is this foam grip here on the handle. You can see this particular saw is uh, fairly new. It hasn't been on uh, many adventures yet, but this foam could easily uh, be destroyed, you know, with uh, use in the field and in rough conditions. However, that's really no big deal. Uh, even if the foam was not there at all, like on this side, uh, certainly still easy to grip and control. Um, you would probably be wearing gloves when you're doing your wood processing anyway. And if you really wanted something there, you know, perhaps wrapping it with some duct tape or paracord and you could fix a new handle, no problem. Uh, one area of concern is the blades. Uh, since the saw is now discontinued and parts are no longer available, it may be the case that we can no longer purchase blades for our saws. Uh, again, a little creativity, you could easily take another uh, another hacksaw blade and you know fabricated to fit fit your saw I even considered uh, possibly doing a video on that uh, if there is interest so you know if you guys want to see that let me know in the comments or message me and uh, I may do that for you Okay guys, so uh, I hope this video was useful for any of you fellow Solviver owners out there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you along the trail.